Hello, Star Wars CCG players, fans, and folks with nothing better to do on a Friday night than listen to the dulcet tones of my voice while you wait for dinner to get ready. Uh, Garrett Larson here, dead body on the forums and Slack and GIMP and everywhere else. Uh, here to bring you some uh, Killer Bee action. Uh, a couple weeks ago we did uh, Dan Tartaglione, D, D Tartag1, the official unofficial voice of Star Wars CCG versus Matt Thornton in a teammate battle on for the Scarif League. This week we're sticking with DTAR Tag 1 and he is facing the Sheriff of Gemp, Batmouse, Anthony Howard himself. Uh, Dan is putting up his 2-0 record when I picked the decks for him. Uh, he beat um, Matt, and in the first round of the Gem PC, long those, low those many months ago, he beat Frodo Light with decks I picked for them to play. Um, now it's time to see if that holds out. Let's see if he can keep that record going and go 3-0 and now facing against Batmouse, who's definitely had some success recently. I mean, he was top eight at Worlds. He's done, you know, top four, the Gem PC before last. Like, Batmouse is a very solid player. Dan's a very solid player. Uh, I got to pick the matchup along with uh, Pat Johnson, another one of our teammates who suggested the match. So it should be an interactive match. I will say I do think it favors Dan a little bit. Um, now, can Dan use that to his advantage? Is Batmouse Luck going to reign supreme and, you know, end up with him getting murdered because Batmouse does something crazy? We're just going to have to watch and find out. Uh, the table is up. I see Batmouse has it posted, uh, waiting for Dan to save the deck I sent him and get, uh, get into the league. Uh, don't want to give away the match until Dan or Batmouse shows up, although it does look like we have no viewers yet, so I don't think Dan's in here. But it will be Batmouse is playing Hitco. He is the chosen one. Uh, very close to the version I played at Indianapolis that I know was on uh, the PC stream for a couple games. Uh, it's a fun deck. It's a solid deck. It gives you a lot of tools to do a lot of things. And Dan's going to be playing I Want That Map. Uh, these are decks that want to battle, that want to do things. It should be an interactive match. Um, I do think Map is a little bit favored. The ability to for Kylo to stop swings is real bad for Hitco that wants to hit people and make those trades. So, it, it favors Dan, but not sufficiently enough that it's a, oh my gosh, this is an unwinnable matchup. But it definitely is a little bit in Dan's favor. So, that being said, it's also Hitco's a deck that can occasionally just draw the perfect opening hand and just go ham all over everyone. Um... Just waiting to see Dan, uh, who is logged into GEMP, join the league and join the game, and we can get this uh, all going. Uh, let's refresh the page here because I'm knocked out of chat. So, let's see if Dan was just waiting for my OK. But this should be a good match, it'll be fun to watch. And then a few hours from now, about four, four and a half hours from now, we're going to stream. Uh, I'm going to stream with Charles Hickey, who's teacher on uh, the forums and GAMP and everything. The top eight of NRabbit and uh, Brad Kipple in the No V Cards, No Episode One car classic map. Um, that's the format that the online uh, 
charity event was this year. It was definitely an interesting meta. Uh, I think it's one of those metas that's really never existed, so it's never really been solved. It was not something a lot of people had decks just ready to go for. Um, I played in it and did terrible because I didn't spend the time to think about decks that would be good in it, and that was a mistake, but it was a lot of fun, and watching Eddie and Rabbit and Brad Kipple be Kipple play, it will be very fun. So as soon as Dan joins the uh, game, we'll be ready to go. I'm just kind of spamming talking so I'm not sitting in silence because uh, Dan needs to needs to get in here. Let me send him a uh, message real quick. Uh, Alright, so he's getting ready. My guess is he's probably downloading the deck and looking at it and cursing me at least a little bit. Um, but makes the life interesting on a Friday night. I mean, what else am I going to do? Let's hang out here, talk with you guys, see if we can watch some fun Star Wars, and watch a couple friends of mine play each other in a game that's certainly going to be hotly contested. Both of them are good players and want to win, but is definitely going to be somewhat lighthearted for both of them. Like, th these are two guys that will be very happy for their opponent if they win as well. Like, they're just good good folks. So, waiting for Dan to jump on while we wait for Dan. Um, a lot of stuff going on right now. We've got lots of regionals starting to fire. I know next weekend on the 29th is going to be Bespin Regionals. I'll be there hopefully on time. i got a work thing going on that may run me a couple minutes late, but I'm going to do my best to get there on time and play. Uh, the Naboo Regional is, I believe, going on as we speak, or is starting in a little bit here. Uh, my friend Peter Jacobson is over there with the guys. I, he posted a couple videos of them doing some sort of Star Wars cards and bowling thing that seems awesome and slightly terrifying all at once. We've got Nationals coming up in New Jersey in August. That's always a good time. I mean, Jersey always draws a good cloud. Good folks over there on the East Coast. It's a fun, uh, fun time. And then obviously Worlds in Germany in October. A lot of good stuff coming up. The OCS is still going on. Uh, I think MHT and Casey are the top two and both have already qualified. And in third place right now is Pat Johnson, who is another teammate of mine at 9-3. and three, So I don't know how that all works out in terms of qualification. I think you do have to be 10-2 and two to qualify. So Pat may end up finishing third, and we may just not have qualifiers this month. There's still some time left, though. There's still people left to play. Uh, I am sitting at, I think, 5-4. and four, So I'm certainly not making the cut. But be a couple more months of OCS and like I said lots of live play opportunities going on I think the Frodo Light and his crew are the uh, Corporal Beezer crew are doing a uh, are doing another tournament uh, much like they did on New Year's Eve along with a hot wing eating competition, which should be pretty awesome. And then I believe the Connecticut States or whatever region that is, regionals going on right around that weekend as well. There's lots of stuff going on. You can go to the forums and see all the different, uh, uh, all the different things that are going on. All right, so it's not just my refresh. It's Dan just hasn't joined the game yet. Um, there's just a ton going on. It's a great time to play Star Wars. And talking about the forums, talking about stuff like that, 
all those things are run by volunteers. It's volunteer hours, volunteer stuff that makes GIMP run, that makes playtesting run. We're going to have new, you know, there's a VSET 24 spoiler on the forums. There's another one, I believe, on Corrin and Batmouse's uh, Top 8 podcast. That's going to start coming out soon at some point. I may even get to spoil one of those cards, although it'll probably be Dan because he actually knows how to do like the graphic stuff and make it show up on the computer, and I'd probably just do something real dumb. There we go. Looks like Dan... Oh. Nope, Dan didn't show up. Batmouse just dropped the uh, game. Um, yep. All right. I'm not sure what's going on right now. So, but... Volunteering is definitely the best way to give back to the community and help make sure stuff gets done and enjoyed. You know, there's lots of ways to volunteer. There's lots of things you can do to volunteer and anything you are capable of, the PC can find a use for you. Like, you know, reach out to one of the advocates and get stuff going. Um, the other thing you can do, the easiest way to help the PC is if you have Amazon Prime, and unfortunately it's sort of ubiquitous at this point, lots and lots of folks do, you get a free subscription to Twitch. Use that subscription for the PC. It throws a few dollars the PC's way, you get some foils for it when you first sign up, and then at like six months, 12 months, etc., you do have to go in and renew it every month. It does not auto-renew, unfortunately, but... It's a great way to support the players committee and allow things like this tournament, you know, the, all these leagues that are going on, GEMP just in its existence, like server space, bandwidth, none of that's free. The PC works very hard to produce and provide all this stuff. Um, I'm still not sure where uh, Dan is and what's going on, so... I'm just going to check a uh, message in here and see if uh, check with Batmouse, see if uh, something got said and we are not uh, not playing today or what's going on so what we'll see where this rolls and yeah until then because i'm not going to sit in silence you just get to hear me stream of consciousness and this really isn't great no one wants to hear this so let's see is there any interesting games going on right now drops versus zero hour premiered in new hope sealed casual game drops versus trm private game private game ring m versus hidden base in premiered dust r2 that's almost over and then another sealed premiered a New Hope sealed game. Um, nope, none of those are really worth uh, bouncing into and watching right now. I'm just going to wait and see what's going on with Dan. I, Batmouse is going to reach out to him real quick and make sure we're all on the same uh, same page. Um, and we will get going. It does look like there's a couple OCS games posted if anyone's looking to get their games in. I can tell you they're not mine. And beyond that, I don't know who they are. It's uh, somebody, but you still got time to finish the OCS. It's June 21st. You've got another nine days. If you don't have your games in, get them in so you can get your cool foil. I'm not honestly not sure what the foil is for this month. I'll be entirely honest. I get foils from... Uh, Jared and the Players Committee, and I'm just happy when they show up. I don't worry too much about which ones I'm getting or not getting, because I just love shiny things, new cards, new things, you know, shiny cards make me happy. So when they show up, I'm happy, and I like the surprise. It's a lot easier than being like, oh, which one am I supposed to get, and wait for it to show up, just like, oh, a package, and then I get to open it and be like, I got cards, and be happy. So, yes, I'm very simple that way, but it keeps my life happy, and then it's one less thing I have to think about and worry about and consider. It's just like, oh, I'm happy, I get cards, and everything is good. So, we're still waiting to see uh, what's going on with 
Dan and Batmouse again. They're both here in Gamp. I wonder if Dan had a work call or something come up real quick. It's times like this, it's really good to have two people, one of whom is much more organized than me, to kind of chat and chat this stuff off because I am not good at stream of consciousness stuff and without anyone to kind of bounce off of y'all have had like 15 minutes of me just randomly talking so I'm really hoping that uh, Dan can edit this down before it shows up on YouTube uh, now we got Batmouse put the game back up I'm expecting we'll see something ready to go here in just a moment uh, again Batmouse playing He's the Chosen One. Uh, it is the Twilight is Upon Us version, even though I feel bad, felt bad uh, playing it. So, um, and Dan will be playing I Want That Map. So, let's, as uh, soon as Dan accepts that game, we're ready to rock. Just waiting for, waiting for things to show up. And Dan, you can accept any time now. Um, I kind of gone through all the stuff I want to talk about. There's, you know, lots of ways to apologize. Somebody decided to have the temerity to leave my house. A visitor here hanging out with one of my kids decided to get up and move and my dog is not a fan of strangers moving around in his house so at least it didn't happen during the game where we could think that my dog was better than me at Star Wars and judge some of the uh, things alright there we go Dan jumped in he is ready to go we'll open the link in a new tab and get started so again this is <laughs> dan with i want that map versus batmouse playing he is the chosen one i don't know that batmouse has ever played hitco before or not sufficiently enough that he's well practiced with it i believe dan has certainly played uh map before oh batmouse going with leia as the resistance agent that uh was a mistake uh, i think he might have forgotten that he could just not declare an agent and make luke the agent you give up luke's immunity to attrition but you're running five of him and it helps keep you on the zero side a lot better because you can't deploy BB-8, like you can't have BB-8 in the deck and you do want the retrieval and stuff going on once you, you know. But you do want to get him flipped. So we got the His Destiny, Twilight is Upon Me, and Like My Father Before Me for Batmouse. Dan starts with I will finish what she started, Bow to the First Order, and Mind Tricks Don't Work on Me. Mind Tricks is the um <laughs> Mind Tricks is the uh, Gick effect. Uh, looks like Batmouse and Dan are uh, discussing that next time I have to do this and they get to make fun of me, and I'd be game for that. Like, that would be uh, tolerable. I mean, it's certainly, you know, not going to change how bad I play, so, like, having them make fun of me while it happens isn't going to change much. So we see... Batmoss went and got Yoda's Hut from Reserve Deck. Dan drops Imperial Command. And if you are following the chat on Gamp, Batmoss is, and Dan have pointed out that it is my birthday today. I am old, and this is what's fun for me now, is I'm old and I get to make fun of my friends while they play. So, that's what we're doing. Um... Dan grabbed General Hux with command. And we see grabber shields come out. Like this first turn is going to be 
basically a chunk of setup unless Dan's got like a really good, uh, you know, if he's got a quick Kylo or something to go to town. Um, he does not have Kylo's uh, Kylo shuttle in this deck. So it's going on. I'm really not needing them in uh, chat pointing out that, yeah, there's multiple team members where you can add their ages up and I'm still older than them. I think that just says that we have a team full of young, hungry players who are up and comers. You know, we got AJ Hatoum, who just won the Rosemount Championship against some very stiff competition. Jake Nelson, Dennis, Charlie Arlinson, etc. And Logan Pedig, who was top four in the Gem PC. So we got, you know, Killer Bees have some fun guys to uh, play. Dan goes and gets the Star Killer based Forest. Let's see where he goes with this. I'm sure if he's got the Jakku, if the system's in there, he's going to throw someone to Jakku and the system maybe isn't in there, or he really just didn't want to put someone down alone and risk a Luke-fueled beatdown. Although if you put him at the 1-0, uh, Luke's not coming in. Dan instead picks some up and says we're good. I don't believe he pulled Finalizer either, so he must have open-handed that. Stops at 14 cards and says, alright, Batmouse, your turn. Batmouse starts with a second Our Only Hope to go get the Death Star 2 sight. Um, solid start. Like, getting both of those out so you can get your zeros out and start rolling is pretty good. Like, he'll activate, he's going to use Twilight to grab a Docking Bay He's going to throw down Yoda's HUD. He probably won't throw out the 2-2. I would expect he'll probably just think about losing that. Because you're going to want to go after Dan. You don't want to try and turn this into a drain race. Like, you don't win. You don't win this by trying to just race map. You're going to need to be able to go after them somehow. Um, Garrett always says nice things. So... And we do see, yep, Batmouse throws down Yoda's hut, uses Twilight to go grab a mobile docking bay. So it'll be home one or profundity. And probably just played a game of Count the Lukes. So let's see. Count the Lukes, count the Sabres. And let's see what he came up with. Are we drawing? Are we playing somebody or what? Batmouse played Count the Lukes and decided there was some in his force pile, so he's going to draw as well. This is a slow start for both players, honestly. I definitely expected one of them to play something, and Batmouse draws up to 14 as well. He's going to be activating 11. Dan's activating 9. So Dan's up to 12 because he did save 3 force um, since most of his pulls did not, or some of his pulls did not uh, cost him a card. Goes for the other Star Killer base site and misses. That's not what he wanted. So Batmouse gets a uh, verify of the deck early. Um, there's nothing super super crazy about the deck. Like it's a it's a pretty straightforward map. And honestly, Batmouse has got a fairly straightforward hit co. Um, it's the like I said, it's very, very similar to the one I played in Indianapolis, so it runs the Falcon with an all-wings combo, Princess Leia, Han with gun, and the ability to just kind of hit a blowout in space as opposed to, like, using Han Chewie and the Falcon, who just kind of hoped to stay alive for a little bit. And there's Dan dropping Lieutenant Dolphy Mitka at the 1-0 to pull a the Jakku system <laughs> and I'm assuming Dan confirmed that the Jakku system was in there yep there we go so that'll bump Dan's activation a little bit 
It's got to put something down, though. You're not. Yep, there we go. There's the finalizer. And Jakku is fairly safe. I mean, Dan's space package is really around drawing multiple battle destiny in one big battle, and he can't do that at Jakku. So there's Hux on board the finalizer to get the bow pull. And in chat, well, my team chat right now, Pat and Batmouse are complaining back and forth, and you know, Batmouse is definitely unhappy with the matchup that got picked. As I said, it's definitely, I think, a matchup that favors Dan. So, but not so much so that Dan can't either make a mistake or Batmouse can't play his way out of a mistake. We see Dan dropping Spectre the Supreme Leader, which is going to let him get back Kylo or Kylo's Saber. When he finds one, if uh, one of them die, that's a big card. And yep, he's going to shuttle Dolph, Dolph a Mitka up and just lock down that Drain of Two at Jakku. Because, I mean, Batmouse can try and go after it with the, if he's got the Falcon and the All Wings combo in hand. Because that will allow him to get a second Battle Destiny. But that's a dangerous, dangerous play. Um, you know, it, it's, it's possible. And, like, he can't command, Dan can't command right now. He doesn't have PV up there. You know, he's only got immune to less than five. And he doesn't have a ton of forfeit up there. I mean, Mitka's a three, and Hux is a five. So, like, if Batmouse has it, this is the time to just make this drop. And you go, all right, Falcon, Han. You know, Falcon, Han with gun. Princess Leia. Battle. All wings for a destiny. Draw destiny. If you get a total of nine or higher, you blew up the finalizer. And that's pretty reasonable to do. So, we'll see if he hit that combo. I kind of think he probably didn't. Because that is a, you know, it's like four one-off cards. Yep, he did not hit the combo. Instead, he's going to throw down Luke Rebel Scout at the Tunnel Village. Um, I don't hate putting Luke there. I don't necessarily love it. I think he, you know, getting him at uh, Endor bringing down Dan's activation a little bit and then getting Prophecy moved over would be good. Uh, looks like Batmouse missed his Saber pull. Um, that's why you use Twilight, Batmouse. Now he's using Twilight. Wow. That's an example of Batmouse just being unfamiliar with the deck, which is what happens when you get some a deck five to ten minutes before the game starts. Uh, little things like, hey, use Twilight before you lose, like, my father before me. And actually, you can do it before you even deploy Luke. Like, use your Twilight, play Count the Sabres, and then decide, hey, you know, if I can't find Luke, maybe this is just not the way I, you know, if I don't have the Saber, maybe I do something different. Instead, that being said, Luke plus Obi there is still a pretty formidable hit squad. And definitely not going to be easy for Dan to just come at and try and take down. So we'll see. Looks like Dan allowed Batmouse to retrieve Anakin's destiny. Yeah, there's no reason not to. That doesn't really impact him at all. It's just a random force. Dan did forget to put out secret plans. So apparently he is now just trying to be Joe, channeling his inner Joe Olsen and letting Batmouse retrieve for free. That feels like a mistake, but uh, it is what it is. Uh, let's see if Batmouse throws out Battle Order here, or if he's just going to let Dan drain for free. And Nope, Batmouse says, I do not forget about shields, and he's going to make Dan pay for that drain. Um, I don't know if Dan's going to. Like, he, If he doesn't have necessarily something else he wants to do, he might, but I think if you're Dan, you pull the other Starkiller base site, or you deploy it if you drew it, although I don't think he drew, it, drew too much. And then you drop, you flip your objective, and you tell Batmouse to figure out an answer. Like, Battle Plan's going to hurt Batmouse as much as it is, you know, slowing down Dan for one turn is fine. Like, I, I think I'm fine with Batmouse dropping it, because you're going to need to... 
If he doesn't drop it, Dan's dropping it next turn, and this isn't a shield bust version, you know, with two one destiny characters out there. So we do see Dan uses Star Killer Base to get the shield control. So he's starting to bump up his activation a little bit. I expect we'll see someone come down at one of those Star Killer Base sites. Probably Kylo. I mean, if he's got the Spectre out, he's got to be thinking he's got Kylo. But we'll see. Yep, there's Kylo, Master of the Knights of Ren. Um, there is a gorgeous, that's one of the gorgeous alt arts uh, that the PCs put out now for uh, top four, or I think top two finishes in uh, the big tournaments is the Kylo order breaking Kylo, which is absolutely stunning. And I, I know I talk about this more than once, but. I cannot say enough how amazing the graphic design work our volunteers do. Like, the cosplayers they find, the work they put in, it's gorgeous. Dan says, I don't feel like you neighboring on top of me and drops BB-9 as well. Dan's got a good start put in here. Like, that's, uh, you know... We'll see what uh, what we've got. Um, Dan saves two force. Like, he's flipped. He's got a battleground site and a battleground system. He's going to start draining heavy. Batmoss has got to do something. And this is kind of where the... Where this deck struggles a little bit. Where Hitko can struggle is between... I will find them, or I'll finish what you started. And Kylo just naturally having ability 5. He's hard to hit. And that's something Batmoss is going to have to figure out a way to do. So looks like Batmoss is getting another lightsaber out. So he did find it this time. Um, that being said, I don't love just leaving them there. Like... If Dan, well, Dan's not going to move uh, Prophecy this turn. She's got to drain with total ability greater than five. But once Prophecy starts bouncing around, like you're not doing much. And Luke gets Bionic Hand as well, so Luke is uh, loaded for bear at Jakku. And I'm not positive. I love Batmouse putting Luke down and letting Dan. Initiate. Okay, so he had the first aid to move them. I don't love him letting Dan initiate the attacks on him. Like, I would have liked to see Luke come down as a surprise against Kylo, and you can, you know, at least take that shot at him. But it is what it is. So, Batmouse uses Odin Nestler and first aid to transit everybody. Over there, I'm assuming he's probably he's got to be sitting on a blaster deflection to cover the swing this turn, and he'll probably pick up a few cards. I mean, there's no reason not to pick a couple up and leave himself some force to pay for she, you know, pay for battle destiny draws, pay for interrupts in case Dan drops first strike, etc. Um, that being said, if Dan's got like a uh, sniper here. For Luke, that could get real spicy. Um, we'll see what uh, what happens. Oh, Batmouse drawing up above 14. I think he's trying to tempt Dan into popping the shield. And Dan is, so I'm sure Batmouse is just going to play something like a Hear Me Baby to cycle a card down. Um, yep, playing in our only hope to relocate Prophecy. I don't love moving it to the battleground. You, you're giving Dan that extra force. I think I might have moved it to back to Endor. Unless you think you're going to clear Dan out and get a drain here next turn, which I'm not positive is what's going to happen. But Batmoss is going to need a drain of two here. And that, what did I say? If he's got the sniper, this could get interesting. 
Fat Mouse grabbing Sniper right away, which is definitely the way to go, because with the objective flip, you can just throw it back on uh, finish and play it a second time. And Fat Mouse has the Blaster Deflection, which Dan in turn grabs. Now, unfortunately for Dan, or for Batmouse, that means he doesn't, he can't stop the weapon swing in, in the battle now, assuming Dan battles him. But you see the first card from hand is the Death Star 2 walkway, and there goes the Falcon. Um, now, if Dan, if uh, Batmouse had walk lean, he could just get the Falcon back. Uh, that being said, this is not a deck. You do that with a bunch of the one-offs for the Falcon. You need to make sure if you throw it down, you can find your Chewie and or Han that you need to set the combo up. So that's not the way to do that. You just got to take that risk and Batmouse got burned. Um, so I don't expect to see Batmouse go to space. Dan will probably, when he can, get the Steadfast at Starkiller and really start trying to hammer these Space Drains out. But he did just uh, give Dan, give uh, Batmoss a Verify, looking for a, something that didn't exist, which was a Starkiller base site. There's only two in the deck, and what did I say? The Steadfast at Starkiller, because with the Falcon gone... Batmouse doesn't have space. Now, if Batmouse has Unita in his hand, this could get fun. Uh, instead, just throws Grand Admiral Thrawn on the Steadfast as well. I expect he'll probably just move Kylo. I think you got to move Kylo in a BB-8. Like you don't sit, you don't leave him in front and let let Batmouse battle you. Yep, there he goes. Dan playing it very smart. Like, he's got the advantage right now. There's no need to waste that. So, he moves him over. Kylo gets... Where's Kylo going to be along? Oh, Kylo armed with the lightsaber, so he's power plus two. Throws down resistance as well, so Batmouse can pay three to drain for two instead of four. And Dan's playing this very smart. Like... Dan says, hey, I've got the advantage in this matchup, and things didn't necessarily start great for Batmouse, so I'm going to take advantage of that advantage. Um, like I said, Batmouse needs an Unita here. He, he needs it real bad to get Unita and get back that Falcon. Or I think the Space Drains are just going to kill him real quick. Uh, he does pay three to drain. I don't hate that. Like, he has 12 cards in hand. He didn't put one back with, like, my father. So he certainly could have... You know, he might be trying to figure that out somewhere. He's got enough force to do whatever he wants. Dan loses a We Must Accelerate from hand, which makes sense. There's not any interrupt or any effects he desperately needs right now. And an Imperial Command off the top. There is the Unita. So Batmouse says, well, I've got some space... Or this is the only space I have, because it is. Let's see what we can do. Yeah, Dan, no surprise. I mean, Batmouse is known for being kind of lucky and having the cards he needs. You know, something he, uh, you know, as the Sheriff of Bat Sheriff of Gimp, he does generally have some decent luck with Gimp. Now, is he able to do something with that this turn? Dan does have one force saved. Um, so just in case there's something crazy like a, you know, draw their fire, he can still play command if he needs to. And, you know, Ban says, yep, Dan says that's Batmouse luck. You know, Batmouse definitely has some lucky plays, but Batmouse plays a lot of games and plays very, very well. And you make your own luck in this game and in a lot of games like the better you play the luckier you get and that's just how it works sometimes and so does some, look like batmouse maybe has some of the cards he wants and he's thinking of testing dan seeing if he's got a command uh, 
Dan says I'm not Bat Mouse, which is very accurate, but could also be Dan trying to lie and convince Bat Mouse to make an attack where he is disadvantaged. You know, a Imperial Command to limit to one would be pretty bad. And honestly, if he goes after Thrawn, like an Imperial Command that, you know, draws three could be equally painful. Like, Dan drawing three probably takes Batmouse off the, you know, gets rid of all of his space. So we see seven for the Falcon and Hera. And Dan says, well, I'm going to play Barrier instead. Now, Batmouse certainly has answers for that. Is he going to use them? Uh, nope, he did not have the answers in hand for that. There's a, at least one Bith Shuffle combo. Like, you, you kind of want to play for and be ready for that. So, Hera is buried on the Falcon. Now, Lando comes in as a pilot as well. So, he's got a whole bunch of Destiny he can draw there. If Dan doesn't have a command, Dan could also just move away and drop the Coward Shield and say, okay. And that might be what he does. Like, again, Dan wants to just do this the take the grind and try and win with the grind that's the grind you know drain for two move away he can stack that command he's lost on I will finish what you start honestly that might be the other thing is just stack that command and I'll finish what you started and say thanks like that, that suddenly he has a command. Uh, Batmouse gonna obviously pay one to keep Lando alive. And Dan starts right away with stacking and interrupt, and he stacks the command. It's almost like I know what I'm talking about every once in a while. And that's bad for Batmouse. Like, that's potentially real unpleasant. Because he'll go from three battle destinies to one. And maybe he's got the all-wings combo, but we'll see. First off, though, drain to two. I assume Batmouse will lose. Yep, he loses Ezra off the top, and if he's got a high destiny in hand, nope. Loses the first eight off the top, so he will be able to retrieve and add four to the Falcon's power because of Scoundrel Lando, and Dan does not have... Secret plans out at all. He just says, I'll just let you retrieve for free all game. So here's the battle start. Oh, the objective cancels the Lando retrieval. And now we see Imperial Command from hand to limit Batmouse to one. That's part of why I might have actually gone to Jakku. Although you'd have to have the. Uh, all wings combo, but like, oh, that one's no good. Uh, there's some, nope. As I say, there's some sitting on it, but I'm not sure what he was doing anything with it. And a four, so he wasn't sitting on the Sith, Sith Fury as that went right there. So he's up to five, so he's cracked the immunity. And six, so kind of bad draws actually for. Oh, actually, there is no immunity, because it only mean if Han or Chewie are piloting. But honestly, that six is a pretty minor draw. There's a four, so it's ten to eighteen. I think you lose Lando and... Lando and one? Like, yeah, Dan has to lose Aplek, but he's still got Thrawn, and he's got the command on finish, which is big. And he played the command from hand instead of just using the one-off finish because Kyla does get the plus one power from cards on finish, so if you can keep it in there, you keep it keep it up there. Uh, but Dan did have the Batmouse luck. He had the command. Battle at Starkiller Base has ended. Now, does Dan want to battle Luke and Obi? I don't think he does. I think he's just going to play the runaway game, let them you know pay to drain for two, and go. Dan's certainly got, currently got 30 cards down and four in hand for a total of 
twenty of thirty-four. Bat mouse with twenty-seven down and eight in hand for a total of thirty-five. So bat mouse is you know it feels close right now, but I do think Dan's in a slightly better position. Dan moves the finalizer over to Star Killer Base. That was a mistake. Like that just turned his whole uh, that flipped off his objective. Although once he moves over, he's, if he moves Tarkin over, thrown over, he's just going to flip it back. But why would you? I don't even understand moving the finalizer there. I, I mean, you've got the command already there, so even if Batmouse does drop, like, Han and Chewie, you're still like, alright, whatever. Draw your one destiny. Yep, so he moves the step cast over. Um, without command, I don't like that. I mean, I guess if he's sitting on a comm scan, he can just cancel the drain of the Falcon. That's fine. Um... Oh, is he going to move, play the uh, move game and then move the finalizer over? Uh, okay, I guess. Uh, um, yeah. You potentially lose Thrawn if he battles into the Steadfast with Thrawn, but you're still drawing two Battle Destiny there. You're limiting him to one. Like, that's still not a good battle for Batmouse. And he doesn't want to be there for the repeat. Um, but Dan's choice. Let's see what he does. I think Dan is, you know, counting on Batmouse doesn't have any other space to go after that lone steadfast. Otherwise, that would be a little bit dangerous to leave it up there. Um, Batmoss does have to pay for the drain, though, because the one thing he gets from moving the Steadfast is it's no longer a battleground. Dan loses PD and Nines from reserve deck, along with turn it off because he no longer occupies three battlegrounds, so resistance does not come into play. Um, I guess you saved yourself one force and, like, you make it harder for Dan to, or for Batmoss to attack, but I still don't know that I love that play. I, I just don't think it is particularly impactful. So, comes Andor on the Falcon as a pilot. that allow him to cancel a Battle Destiny, but he still doesn't have any immunity, and with Thrawn, you're still facing down two. Not a big fan of that play. And we see Dan gets the verify. Now, is he going to force put? Does he have the, used for, the uh, force push combo to use? That'd be kind of fun to watch that spike off a card from Batmouse. As Dan is playing this uh, 5 Luke, 4 1 Luke, 6 5, 4 7. Um, I'm assuming those Lukes are Rebel Scout Lukes, so he's just drawing to, he'll flip him into redraw, which is fine. Like, it's decent destiny. He probably cracks the finalizer's immunity. Other than that one, he probably cracks, oh, and he does drop the force push combo to push the six out of play. That's, that was nice. That's why it's in there. And Dan used it effectively. Um, Batmouse, I don't like how he's played space so far this game. Like, he doesn't have Han. He's going to get him now. Is he getting Han or is he getting Chewy? Alright, so he's getting Han with Blaster Pistol and making Han a passenger. And then I think you'll, assuming Dan doesn't barrier him, you'll see the move Lando to the, oh, he doesn't even have Lando. I think you move Cassian to the passenger. Oh, he runs away. Um, 
that's fine. Like, if he's just trying to stay alive in space and he moves Luke in front of Kylo along with uh, old man Obi-Wan. And Batmouse is just going to try and grind here. I think he's just trying to find cards. Like, he, this keeps him alive in space. keeps it a battleground system. You're trying to make something happen, and I expect we'll see Dan probably just pull the okay. Let's shift my guys and do this again. So, actually, this time Dan isn't going to be able to drain. Like, not having Steadfast at Starkiller Base is kind of big. So, Batmouse, doing Batmouse things, draws a bunch of cards. Now, Dan's got to decide. I think Dan's got to start a battle somewhere. It's just where. What's the battle you start? He lost PB. I don't think he's got any other admirals in the deck. Uh, he's going to throw another card on, and now you give it to me. He gets to turn it off from Lost Pile, which is good because... A second uh, Lando could be obnoxious. This is again where leaving Luke as the agent would have been good. I know that's something we've talked about as a team for this matchup. And like if Luke was the agent, this would be a much more. This would have been a little more interesting because he would have been f keeping him on the zero side. There's Supreme Leader Snoke going to Jakku. Dan grabbing a card off bow. I wonder if he misordered that. Um, if he's deploying anything else, he would have wanted to do that first. Unless he's got another bow pull, like he needed to get Phasma or something of that nature. And let's see what his next play is. Snoke says, anywhere you initiate a battle with all your abilities provided by first order characters, opponent loses one force. So if he backs up Kylo with like Phasma and somebody else and tries to tries to go after it, he will cause a ping when he starts the battle. I don't know that that's the greatest play. Like I, I really don't think that's super beneficial. Unless you know you can hit Luke and take him out. Um, and Batmouse does have two force saves, which screams, I've got a blaster deflection. You see, no escape to go grab nines. Are we going to see nines plus Phasma with Kylo and two battle destinies and try and take a shot at it? Nines, who you can cancel an opponent's just drawn automated or lightsaber weapon destiny. And there's FN 2003. So you can make him hit and cancel game text. There's Phasma. Um, I expect you probably hit and cancel Luke's text. So you no longer get the plus to battle destiny. You can fire for free, etc. Although I don't think you're shooting. I mean, you're not shooting with nines. But you are going to swing Kylo's saber, and saving yourself force is good. Um, so doing it before battle and just losing FN? Okay. I guess I would have waited till the battle was started, but all right. That's Dan's uh, choice. So we get the battle... Snoke's going to cost him a force here. Um, he's only got one lightsaber to swing, and basically Nines and Kylo can stop both of those draws, so he's probably not hitting anything. Oh, he does. Batmouse has a Jedi's Concentration to stop all lightsabers from being swung. So Nines did nothing there. Uh, or not Nines, uh, 2003. Although that's also... One more reason why you hold on to 2003, because you could have considered just not doing that and keeping him there in the case of a, you know, to cancel or to just soak up Battle Destiny. 
Matt Miles plays the Force of Strong with this one to add a battle destiny. And I expect he'll just use the Bionic Can to go get that back right away. Uh, and there's Anakin Skywalker to add a destiny to attrition. So he's going to try and clear everybody and probably just hope that Dan draws low enough he only has to lose Obi-Wan. Like, that's that's the perfect world for Batmouse. Is he just loses Obi-Wan and he does a big number on Dan's hit squad. Uh, that being said, Dan's still got to do it, so let's see. Let's see what we... What happens? Looks like it is on Dan to decide weapons phase action. Uh, there's nothing he wants to play off of finish. Uh, Alright, Batmouse does not use the Bionic Hand. Um, I don't love that. Uh, I think you use the Bionic Hand here to get it back. And, yep, Dan, oh, there's uh, Sith Fury to cancel and redraw as Dan was only going to cost him Obi, and you really, you want to get to nine. Doesn't matter, it's still a six, so it's still just going to be Obi. That could not have gone worse for Dan. Um, yep, Batmouse will happily pay two to draw his two battle destinies. He's fine with that. First one is a two. Now, if he cancels and redraws, he has to pay one to draw the second one. So he's going to end up losing a force to draw both his battle destinies here. But I think you're okay with that. So there's a six. Dan subtracts one. That's fine. Makes it a five. I expect Batmouse might just lose that one to draw it. Like, that's not a super impactful card for him right now. So, losing that to get this second draw. Oh, he loses an R only hope off the top of reserve instead, which was a four. Draws another four, so he's got a total battle destiny of, 11, of ten. Which is going to clear the site, probably. And there's the Destiny to Attrition is a 1. He's going to take that Luke into hand, cancel and redraw. And it's a 5, so 15 does clear the site. That was not what Dan wanted. Uh, it also was high enough Destiny, it causes Dan to stack a card on I Feel the Conflict, which gives Batmouse the, his Destiny grab um yeah none of that battle went Dan's way he did not get any of the things he wanted to get there and Dan's gonna lose everybody I expect he's probably got another Kylo in hand although he did draw one for destiny so he might not but he's going to use Spectre to get back either Kylo or the Saber. Let's see. If he's got a Kylo in hand, he gets back the Saber. If he doesn't have a Kylo, I think you got to get back Kylo. He loses Spectre to get back the Lightsaber, so I think that says he does have another Kylo in hand. And he is expecting to do something with it. Now, that means that he's only got two Force left to use. Um, he moves the Finalizer over to Jakku. And the Steadfast back. So, keeps one force active. But mostly just punishes Dan. Like, and he sends BB-9 away just because. So. And this is, uh... If Kylo on table, you can stack. Yeah, so he needs Kylo to actually use that Imperial Command. So, this might be the chance for Batmouse. Like, this is the spot for Batmouse to go after him in space. Like, if you've got a Chewy, you've got a way to do something. You know, you're drawing two Battle Destiny there right now, because you got Ability plus Hera. If he's got, like, his Princess Leia to add another Battle Destiny... I think this is where you do it. I think you go hard and you hope. So, let's see. First he's going to drain for 
two, which will move Prophecy, but it's still going to be capped at two because Dan does have three Battlegrounds right now. Moves Prophecy, which doesn't change things a whole heck of a lot. Um, this, I, this is the chance for Batmouse. And he drops Grappling Hook, so he can probably grab the command if he has it. Like, if Dan's got a command, I don't know that you can come back from that, but like this is the chance here. And he moves Cassian to the passenger slot, moves on to... Uh, nope, he misclicked. He's moved Cassian, now he's going to move Han, I'm assuming. Yep, there we go. Batmouse trying to stall out the game, uh, even though he's behind in clock right now. <laughs> and he's got 17 cards down to Dan's 22, so stalling out would probably not be in his best interest. Uh, 17 plus 9 in hand is 26. Dan with 22 down and 4 in hand, also at 26. I mean, this has been a close game so far. This has been a very entertaining game, Dan. Are you stalling? Ooh, 2 four, one is bad destiny for Batmouse. Um, like, that that would be a rough, uh, even if he drops Leia and gets the three battle destinies, like, that's a uh, rough battle that costs him Hux and Dulfe, and I think Dan's fine with that. Like, and Dan battles back. So I think uh, Batmouse is very unhappy with that showing up for Destiny. So he's got to do something. And he does. He moves the Falcon over. Um, All right. Like, he needed to get rid of those fours, but that feels real bad. Like, that he didn't have anything in hand he could do something else with. It is not a good feeling. So we see Dan. Dan's going to activate. If he gets Kylo back down, like, this is where this is a problem for... for Batmouse. Is once he gets Kylo back down, that command is now always active again. Um, and Batmouse loses a Luke Rebel Scout from hand, loses another Luke Rebel Scout from hand, and one more force. Let's see what it is. Anakin's Destiny from Force Pile. That's a great card to lose. He doesn't care at all about that card. Dan verifies his deck, counts on the fact that Batmouse is probably not playing change in the odds, which would have been real obnoxious there. Batmouse says tiny ouches, which means probably not great destiny. Uh, there goes Kylo over to Endor. Kylo says, ah, I'm going to just hang out over here, away from Luke. Yep, he's, uh, you know, hiding. But I think it's the right play. And I expect we'll use that. Yep, you'll see, I will finish. Or even now you'll give it to me. Putting a second command on there. So Dan says, I will get my commands through. Uh, it is an old school Super Falcon idea. It runs, the deck runs Han, EPP Han, Han with Heavy Blaster Pistol. Chewy Virtual to get around, like, Zuckus. And Princess Leia Virtual, who adds a Destiny with Han. And then the Falcon, which pulls Han or Chewy. And there, Dan uses the turn it off that was stacked to get Kamiri Big Coward out, which says he's going to run the Steadfast away. I don't really blame him. Like, honestly, you move the Steadfast away and force Batmouse to get a second Battleground before you worry about it. Like, and... That was dumb, Batmouse. Batmouse plays the all-wings combo from hand to look for a unique 
Knife Rider, there's not one. That's in there to grab the Falcon and also to use in those Falcon battles where they have commands. Like, if he had that, Falcon's Maneuver 5, I think? No, Maneuver 4. Yeah, I think I still probably start that battle at Jakku last turn if he'd had that. And then you go count the count on hitting the four, and then try and burn the, you know try and luck into like four four two, where you're now costing him Thrawn and somebody. Instead, uh, Batmouse activates, leaves three in reserve. He's got to do something here. I mean, okay, so he's gonna pay three to drain for two. That's cute. Like. Dan says, all right, I'll lose a couple cards from hand. Loses the comm scan detection. That would have canceled the Falcon Drain anyways. Um, I don't know what Batmouse's uh, endgame is here. This is not the spot he wants to be in. So he's going to have to move over. All right, so he's going to drop Obi on top of Kylo. Um... I don't love saving two to swing. Like, I, I, why even bother? You're not going to get the hit. You're not going to hit. Or you're unlikely to hit. Just draw your battle destiny. Dan. Dan saying, are you sure you can hit him? Like, he's got to draw two sixes. That's not a six. So Dan doesn't care, and he just cancels the next one. And that's fine. But now it gives him one more power as well. So Dan cancels this. And that might be why he played that all wings, is that's the only way he's going to get Kylo off the table. Is he's going to draw this five for weapon destiny, or for battle destiny. Now, if Kylo hits Obi, this could be bad. That's part of why I would not have swung, is you gave Dan an extra one power in that battle. Just because he had an interrupt in hand. All right, so Kylo misses with the swing back, which is okay for Dan, like, or for Batmouse. It means Obi-Wan's got his forfeit, so his forfeit should cover. He's not going to get, you know, he's not going to get overflowed, which was really would have been the fear. Like, if Dan hits him, that's a bad, bad battle. Uh, we see the pay one to draw one. And there's the all wings combo that draws the five. And Dan plays close call to cancel it. And Batmouse with the they're tracking us to cancel close call. Ooh, that was a spicy little set of set of changes. So Dan thought he was going to live through that. Dan is not going to live through that with Kylo. He will lose his Kylo. There's a voyeur. Draws a three for battle destiny, doesn't matter. Any destiny kills Obi, and you won the battle, no matter what. But you lose Kylo, which turns off finish, which is bad. That being said, Dan's still in a pretty commanding position, unless Batmouse can do something about getting him off that second battleground. Or getting a second battle, holding a second battleground to keep Coward in play. Like, I'm not sure I wouldn't have loved just putting Obi at the uh, other Starkiller base site. And it's like, yeah, you're paying for drains. But at that point, you're out draining, you're paying for the drains, but you're dra out draining him six to three. Like, Dan then, or six to four. Dan's got to respond to that somehow. Um, because you are still, I mean, it's 21 force to 20 force. Like you, it's a very close game still. And you force Dan to have a response and have a way to take out Obi without your big gun. Like Kylo's sitting there draining for two. I guess it's five to six. It's close. Because, yeah, Kylo had his saber. But I think I might have left Kylo alone. And just tried to spread and let this drain go through because, like, you're not winning this battle. And if Dan's got a command, like, this is. This doesn't end well at all. Um, and 
and Dan does have a third Kylo. That's it. Like, you, you don't have a... You don't have an out here. He's flipped, so you're losing force to draw Battle Destiny against the Atchaku. And he's going to drop the command from... Finish. Bat Mouse makes close call go out of play. There's the hyperwave scan for Dan just to stop the drain from being minus one. So, and there's BB9 to turn it into a drain of plus one actually. So, all of a sudden, Dan's in a real, real good spot when he was already in a real good spot. So I expect we'll see a battle against the Falcon here, and that will be the end of it. Yep, that little red box says we started a battle. Dan is up by 18 power plus a battle destiny. Uh, he, because of the Jakku system, Batmoss is limited to one, so he doesn't even need the command. Uh, there's the four for the first battle destiny. And a one, so he does correct the immunity. Um, could certainly have used Cassie in there to cancel the battle destiny. I think Batmouse might have uh, punted at this point and said, "You know what? I've lost this game." So he loses a Luke's lightsaber from hand to draw his one battle destiny. It is a five. That's nice. It'll kill something, probably General Hux, but it is still a five. So 14 to 32, he's down by 18. And yep, there goes General Hux. 18's a whole bunch. Hera for six. Cassian for another five. Do you just do the Falcon for seven? And yep, he activates one with Cassian. There's Han for six. And you got one more. I mean, oh, Batmoss loses a punch it. I think he was hoping to get the punch it through, but can't do it at Jakku. Because, I mean, he could have done it to give him full immunity, but that was wouldn't have mattered. And Dan just picks some up and says, yep, I got this locked up. Um, Batmoss is going to activate, drain for two maybe go after Snoke he's leaving one destiny there that's a five so I mean that doesn't even kill Snoke like is he just going to drop someone and try and take out Kylo just say well I'm going to there we go cheer it in way try and take out Kylo ha 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 Dan says no. Dan says barrier. Batmouse spike grabs it on grappling hook and then cancels it with this shuffle. So he's he's pulling out all the tricks and he's trying. I think Dan's got this sealed up, but Batmouse is definitely going to make it interesting and play it out to the bitter end. Because he does actually have a couple cards over Batmouse right now. It's just he's not paying for drains and Batmouse is. And especially if he just moves the Steadfast over, this is going to get real bad for him real quick. Uh, Chirrut peeks at the top card of Dan's reserve deck and leaves it on Dan's reserve deck. I don't think Dan particularly cares. There's really nothing Dan can do to keep Kylo alive unless he's got a way to bounce Chirrut out or, you know, if he's got... Stacks another Imperial Command. Actually, he stacked Close Call on there last turn, didn't he? Or no. Batmoss took put Close Call out of play. So he used Command off there to go get Grievous and made him shuffle, which is good. So Chirrut uses one to draw that five, which will kill Kylo, and that's fine because you've got Grievous come back and Dan draws a five as well so Dan's actually going to cause some overflow here so we at 17 to 10 cheer it forfeits for five so Batmouse is going to lose a couple force as well there goes a Jedi's con from hand 
and Kylo dies, Spectre goes away and gets that Kylo back. There goes Blaster Deflection, and there's Chirrut, so he leaves Chirrut on the top. Um, not entirely sure that matters at all. He's got no bays to go get, and he's got no reserve deck to go get bays from. Uh, Dan plays Imbalance to retrieve... He loses Dr. Rhea and Baba to retrieve, I think, Dr. Rhea and Baba. <laughs> that really just uses... Puts the four back in deck because he's on the seven side. Batmouse can't uh, retrieve. So that imbalance combo doesn't mean much. Um, sorry about the mess. Could potentially do something. Batmouse does use his... Uh, his destiny teleport and flies Luke over to in front of Snoke, so Dan's going to have to do something here, but he does have a Kylo in hand. Uh, he's got a Dr. Ian Ponda who don't do a whole lot, but Batmouse is going to draw some. Um, I mean, if you're Dan, I think you put Kylo away somewhere. Maybe back at the village, you shuttle Snoke up, and you move the Steadfast over and say thanks for playing. Like, all right, pay to drain. Like, you're ahead right now. You're 16 cards to Batmouse is 15. You're going to get a drain of two off here, but, like, you're not paying for drains. He is. And you're forcing him to do use force or lose force to do things, which you're fine with. So, Batmos loses our only hope from hand and all wings combo from hand. He's not contesting space at this point. There's another Kylo. I mean, you've got Grievous, but you don't have any reserve deck because the other thing you could have done would be throw down Grievous with Snoke and then say, well, I've got the command to draw two Battle Destiny and theoretically take out Luke if you draw good enough, but like, you got to crack an eight because of the bionic hand and yep Dan is listening to me although I don't think he really is and instead shuttles Snoke up moves the steadfast over and says alright fine pay to drain like Batmouse is going to pay three to drain for two and Dan's going to in turn drain for two four six all for free and that six is going to be about all she wrote Batmouse needs an answer here. He throws down aim high just because. Um, Dan's just steady stacking cards to finish. Um, we'll say for as bad as that battle went for Dan early in the game, the rest of this game has done very well for him. He's taken advantage of the, I think, positive matchup, the matchup that you know favors him and is doing everything he can to... Lock it down. Batmouse puts card down, pays three to drain for two. You know, he's going to play it out to the bitter end, but it's a drain of four that still is capped at two with resistance because the Steadfast adds the icons. And Dan loses Dr. Ian Ponda Baba and Asajj Ventress with lightsabers from hand. He says, I don't think I'm going to need either of those guys. And honestly, he's probably right. Like, he could have gotten spicy and thrown Asajj down somewhere if he needed to. He puts Chewie on board the Falcon for three. Are we going to see, like, a Leia as well? Because, um, like, Chewie's cute. He draws a Battle Destiny if unable to otherwise. But, like, all right. So he's just counting on Chewie and moving to force the Steadfast off and make it so he gets drained for four instead of six. Okay, like it's try and grind it out, leave a spot for Dan to make a mistake and play it out to the bitter end. Dan throwing out Voyeur, calling our only hope. He might not have too many of those. Oh, he's got one. As I say, he's lost a couple of those already. So Dan uses his used and just says, all right, lose a force. And Batmoss loses and our only hope from you, so he no longer has any early hopes in deck, I don't think. Because he's lost a couple early. 
and just lost one recently. So Dan activates everything. Expect we'll just see drain of four here and doesn't move, pro those drains will not move Prophecy, which means even if he managed to stack another card on Destiny, he can't do anything with it. Um, however, it looks like Dan probably doesn't have another pilot, which would have been, you know, potentially okay to... Oh, it's a drain of three at... That's right, with BB-9, it's a drain of three at the Awok Village. Bat Miles loses Luke Jedi Knight. Fifth Shuffle and Sukutano. Batmoss is down to six cards total. Four in deck, two in hand. Dan's got ten. He says, I'm going to put General Grievous with Kylo in case you were thinking of getting spicy and coming after my uh, drain of three. And Batmoss searches for Chewie or Mercenary Armor and fails. Um, <laughs> and... Dan drops force push off of the uh, off of uh, I will finish to get rid of sorry about the mess combo and Batmouse concedes. Dan is now 3-0 in games where I pick him a deck. Uh, thank you everybody for uh, watching. I hope you guys had fun. Uh, pretty straightforward map versus uh, he is the chosen one. And Dan played it exactly as he needed to. I will be back in about three look three hours, 15 minutes, give or take, with uh, Eddie and Brad in the Retro Charity event, along with Charles Hickey. Until then, thank you all for watching. May the Force be with you.